this is my show. I'm finding stuff out that you want to know. Just ask me a question that I don't know. That's why finding stuff out is the name of the show. So just give me a shout and we'll figure it out with the help of some friends and the fun never ends on. Finding stuff out, finding stuff out, finding stuff out. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Hi, and welcome to Finding Stuff Out, the show where I answer... Oh, I have an itch. I can't reach it. I know exactly what will help. Spaceship. That's not it. Mr. Snugglesworth, I've been looking all over for you. I mean, I'm saving him for research. Ah, here it is. Ah, my trusty back scratcher. Now I can finally reach the itch. It's like having really long fingernails. Anyway, like I was saying, welcome to Finding Stuff Out, the show where you send in your questions and I find out the answers. I've been thinking about fingernails lately because of this question. What would happen if you never cut your fingernails? Would they keep on growing forever? Yeah, imagine if they did. I'd be able to reach the itch on my back and look like a vampire on Halloween. I am Count Harrison. I have come... Hey, is that an olive on my fingernail? Gross! Now, I don't know if our fingernails will grow forever, but by the end of the show, I'll find out the answer. And all kinds of things about how our bodies grow and change. Now here's a question from Rivian. How do we grow? This is a water-expandable dinosaur. Check this out. I thought about what would happen in a swimming pool if just adding water worked for humans. Check out this animation I made. Luckily for pools, we don't grow like that. A human starts out as a tiny embryo inside her mother, then grows into a baby, becomes a child, and then finally develops into an adult. Lots of animals do that. But how? I checked, and growing happens because of two things. One, the genes that you inherit from your parents. Every cell in our body has genes that we get from both of our parents. Genes carry the information that gives us our special traits, like the color of our hair and skin, and our height. So there's not much you can do about that. Two, there is something you can do. Eat nutritious food and exercise. That will help you grow and regrow cells. Hey, so if I ate all this celery, would that be diet or exercise? Anyway, here's a question from Kira. Why do we stop growing? If we didn't stop growing, we'd hit our heads on the ceiling, go through the roof, bump our heads on trees, and smash into the moon. I guess it's a good thing that we stopped growing at some point but I'm not exactly sure why it happens. I read that newborn babies grow one to one and a half inches per month. Okay, if a baby grows that fast, then according to my calculations, it would be 44 inches when it's two years old, 56 inches when it's three years old, and wait a second, 14 feet when it's nine? What? Ah! You're gonna make my head explode. To answer your question, Kira, please welcome my special guest, Dr. John Mitchell. Oh, that is one scary dude. Hi, Harrison. Thanks for having me. Welcome to my show. Thank you. So can you tell me why we stopped growing? Well, if we continue to grow at the rate uh, that we did as a baby, which, as you mentioned before, is about one inch every month, we would grow, well, as big as a whale, really. Hey, baby, get your own sea aquarium. Yeah, why doesn't that happen? Well, it's interesting. We start off growing very fast, but if we look at our bones, and this is an x-ray mm -hmm. of a small baby's hand, we can see that it's got all the bones that we see here, mm -hmm. but we can't see all the bones very well. Dr. Mitchell compares the x-ray picture of a baby's hand to a grown-up hand, like the one on the skeleton. That's an x-ray of a grown-up hand. And that's the baby's hand. There's lots more space between the bones. 
and check out the fingers. There are big bones and tiny bones. I found out from Dr. Mitchell that as we grow older, the tiny bones and the big bones join together and the space between them disappears. As a baby, we have about 270 bones, but as adults, we only have 206 bones. Oh. It's not really the fact that we're losing bones, but as we mature, those bones will fuse together. Where this is really important is our skull. If we look at a skull, we can see that there's sutures in a skull, and that's actually caused from bones fusing together. We need lots of mobility in our skull early on because our brain is growing very fast. Oh, that's why there's a soft spot in a baby's head. That's right. But after a few years, our bones have fused in our skull because our brain is not growing as fast anymore. I have a question from Alicia, and I think you can help find the answer for it. So let's check it out. Do girls grow faster than boys? So Amanda and Christian, welcome to Finding Stuff Out. Hi. How's it going? Good. So you're both 12 years old, but you're not the same size. So does that mean girls grow faster than boys? They do at some times during childhood, but they generally also mature faster. Now, boys continue to grow at a later age, and they finish growing later than girls. Right. And boys eventually will grow taller than girls on average. That reminds me of a question from Alexander. How tall will I be when I grow up? Yeah. Is there a way to figure that out, Dr. John? Well, actually, there's a formula that can help us estimate our final adult height. It's not totally accurate, but we can use it for predicting our height. That sounds perfect for this week's... Uh-oh. Do try this at home. So this is Dr. John's formula. As you can see, you do your dad's height plus your mom's height, and if you're a boy, you add five inches, and if you're a girl, you subtract five inches, then you divide the whole thing by two. So my mom is 60 inches, plus my dad's height, he is 69 inches, plus five inches because I'm a boy, and then you divide that whole thing by two. So according to this calculation, I'm going to be five foot seven inches. However, if you've got all the short genes in your family or all the tall genes, you could be plus or minus four inches from there. So oh, wow. anywhere from about five foot three to about five foot 11. Okay, so what are your results? 67. So that's approximately five foot seven. How tall are you now? Uh, five foot eight. Five foot eight. So we see already, you've probably got some of your parents' taller genes. Wow, and what about you, Christian? I got 65. 65 inches, so that's five foot five. Exactly. How tall are you now? Four foot eight. So we would expect on average, that we would reach up to five foot five, you got a little bit more room to grow. Wow. Will I grow taller or I will stay this height forever? Generally, girls will continue to grow approximately two years after they finish their puberty. So if you haven't finished uh, with your puberty yet, you're gonna still continue to grow. So that means I'll be taller? I don't give exact predictions, but I could say right now that you're going to be taller than you are. There's one main thing that I find cool about this. It's cool, basically. That's all I have to say about this. This is, like, cool. Well, thanks, Dr. John, for being on my show. No problem. It was a pleasure. Yeah, and Amanda and Christian, I'll see you guys later. All right. But sometimes you can't predict how tall you're going to be by looking at your parents. Who's the tallest person in the world and who's the shortest person in the world? I checked, and the tallest person in the world is a man named Sultan Kozin. Oh, hey, he's 253 centimeters tall. That's eight feet, three inches. Oh. I also checked and found out that the shortest person in the world is a man named Chandra Bahadur Dangi. Oh, hey, he's 55 centimeters tall. That's 21 and a half inches. Both of their parents were normal height. So that just goes to show that formula isn't always right. Yeah. How can I make myself grow taller? <laughs> the Flat Earth Corner! Step right up and take one sip of this here elixir and you'll be instantly a good four feet taller. It'll get rid of warts too. 
Oh, and I also have this handy dandy neck stretching contraption in the back of my wagon. One second, I'll go grab it. Oh, oh, steady now. Oh, 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 oh. Once upon a time, people thought you could use elixirs or stretching machines to grow taller. Nowadays, we know better. In 1850, the average North American man stood about five feet, seven inches and weighed about 146 pounds. By the 1980s, the average North American man stood about five feet, 10 inches tall and weighed about 174 pounds. What was the big difference? Diet. In the 1850s, lots of people couldn't afford or couldn't get things like meat and fresh milk, which help your bones and muscles grow. But by the 1980s, it became a lot easier for most people to get good food. Healthy food costs less now than it did in 1850, and it's way easier to find. Exercise helps you build muscles too. And getting lots of sleep is important too, because when you're asleep, your body releases hormones that help you grow. Lucky for us, when we grow, our skin grows along with our body. Some animals don't have it so easy. Here's a question from Tefania. How do snakes shed their skin? To answer your question, Tefania, he knows about things that are scaly and wriggly, cold-blooded and wiggly. Here's Pat Benatar. Hey, Harrison, check this skin out. <laughs> Whoever that belongs to needs to try a gentler exfoliant. <laughs> Thanks for coming on my show, Pat. It's my pleasure. So, the snake's skin is here, but what happened to the rest of the snake? Actually, I have it right down here. I'm just going to pull it out and show you. This is a boa constrictor, and here she is. Whoa! The skin is there, but the snake is there. It grew out of its skin, basically, and snakes, when they grow out of their skin, they grow a new skin underneath, and they slide out of the old skin. Tefania, I found out from Pat that to shed its skin, a snake rubs its nose against hard things like rocks. So its skin starts to separate from its head, and then it just crawls out. So why does it do that? Well, it's part of it is that it's uh, outgrown the skin, and part of it is that it's actually uh, worn the skin out. This thing is heavy. Can you take it back yeah, now? Sure, not a Before problem. Before I fall over here. It's a big one. Ooh. She's over 40 pounds. 40 pounds, wow. But also, if there's any parasites on the old skin, all those parasites come off with it. Parasites are tiny bugs that suck a snake's blood. Same as what fleas do on a dog or a cat. I brought something really cool. It's actually a fire salamander. This is, this is salam. That's a salamander. That's a salamander, yeah. Oh, I heard that they can grow back their legs and their tails if they lose them. It's an amazing thing, yeah. If it gets its arm bitten off or a leg bitten off, it'll grow back the arm, digits and everything. That's awesome. Would you like to hold them, Harrison? Sure. Oh, it's like wet and slimy. <laughs> oh, it's so weird. Well, well, thanks, Pat, for being on my show, and, and Storm, and Sally, of course. Well, thanks for having me, Harrison. It's been a pleasure. Why do seniors get wrinkled? To answer your question, Priscilla, I decided to go to a place that can make me grow up really fast. And here to turn me into a senior citizen is Stan Edmonds, head of makeup design for film and television here at Vancouver Film School. Hey. Welcome, Harrison. So why do people get wrinkled? Well. There's a lot to talk about regarding that, and why don't you sit down? we got a few hours to go over it. Sure. A few days ago, I went to the film school, and they put goop all over my head and hands, which hardened into a cast. Then they poured rubbery stuff inside the cast to make fake skin that fit my face and hands perfectly. Stan tells me that aging has a lot to do with gravity. Well, as people age, sometimes you gain a little bit of weight as you get older. And so the weight of the sides of your face and your neck will start to droop just with the force of gravity. So if I lived my life upside down like a bat, then I wouldn't get wrinkles, right? <laughs> Can you imagine living upside down? You'd have a head full like, of dizziness. As you grow older, your skin loses its elasticity and has less spring to snap back into place so wrinkles can form. Ultraviolet rays from the sun also give you wrinkles. Kids don't get wrinkles for a while because they haven't been in the sun, they're young, their faces haven't moved and aged and weathered. 
So what can I do to prevent getting wrinkles and deteriorating? What you can do is drink lots of water. That's the number one health and beauty secret. Oh. Use moisturizer and use sunscreen when you're in the sun. And now, for the crowning touch, boys and girls, the senior version of me. It's time for the big reveal. <laughs> I'm bald and bald. I, I look kind of like my grandpa. You look like my grandfather. Really? I am your grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> Why are butterflies first a caterpillar? Well, Emma, that can best be answered with a song. Life cycle, life cycle, metamorphosis. Sometimes something, something else before it's what it is. Transformation, alteration, wait and you will see what turns it to a butterfly and what it used to be. An embryo, a larva, a pupa, imago. All stages of the same creature so different as they grow. Yeah. Life cycle, life cycle, metamorphosis. Sometimes something, something else before it's what it is. Caterpillars aren't the only creatures that change their form. Which leads us to... My Great Challenge! So now I am rejoined by Christian... Yeehaw! ...and Amanda. Hi. Are you ready to take my Great Challenge? Of yeah. course. Okay, good stuff. Because on today's Great Challenge, you guys have to match the picture of the baby form of an animal to the adult animal. Whoever gets the most correct answers at the end of it will be the winner. Ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So there's the baby animal. Is it A, a leopard, B, a cheetah, or C, a hyena? What do you think it is? B. B, a cheetah? That is correct. There we go. <laughs> when it grows up, it's going to be fast. Grown-up cheetahs can accelerate from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 3.4 seconds. That's as fast as a sports car. <laughs> there's the baby animal. Is it A, an eel, B, a salamander, or C, a frog? OK, so Christian got it first. I think it's A. You think it's A? That's incorrect. What do you think? C. C is a frog. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> I'm beating you. Adult frogs can live on land, but the land must be near a pond, swamp, or another wet place. They lay their eggs in the water, and that's where they hatch. There's the baby animal. Is it A, a swan, B, a duck, or C, a goose? I think it's B. You think it's B. You would be incorrect. Amanda, do you have a? C. C is also incorrect, so it is actually A. It was a swan. Swans' necks grow to be very long. It helps them reach food underwater. And there we go. Is it A, a caterpillar, B, a ladybug, or C, a monarch butterfly? Christian. I think it is B. B, you're correct. There we go. Yay. Some say they resemble alligators, and they have an appetite like an alligator, too. Fortunately, ladybug larvae like to eat the bugs that eat the plants that we like to eat. So they're a big help to us. Here's our baby animal. Is it A, an emu? B, a kiwi, or C, a penguin? C. C, you're correct. There we go. Penguin. The emperor penguin grows the largest of any penguin species. They weigh up to 40 kilos. OK, so here's the last one. There it is. Is it A, a chihuahua, B, a guinea pig, or C, a rabbit? Christian was first. Mm, let me see. C. C, it is not a rabbit. A. A, yeah, it is a chihuahua. <laughs> there we go. A chihuahua is the smallest dog in the world in both weight and height. So the points are four for Amanda and one for Christian. Amanda, you're the winner. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs <laughs> your fist. Bro fist. <laughs> Bro. This growth and change journey has led me back to the original question. What would happen if you never cut your fingernails? 
that they keep on growing forever? The big answer is... Well, Tristan, that's one thing that would happen if you never cut your fingernails. You couldn't play drums. Fingernails grow at an average of three millimeters a month, so it would take a really long time. But if you're patient, you can grow really long fingernails, like this. That's the longest anybody's ever grown their nails, about 89 centimeters. I can't imagine what they'd come in handy for, especially because real fingernails become curly when they get that long. But if you don't cut them, they'll keep growing and growing and growing and growing and... You get it. Anyway, before I go, Mr. Snugglesworth, didn't you say you had an itchy back? Mr. Snugglesworth, these are fake. You know I could take them off. Mr. Snugglesworth, I told you that you were for research, but that was a joke, you know, right? Anyway, it doesn't really matter because I don't need Mr. Snugglesworth anymore. See you next time for more Finding Stuff Out. Mr. Snugglesworth, where are you? Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go wherever we're going. Where is it? I don't know. Oh, who is it? Oh, hey! Oh, hello! Do you know where I can get a good bowl of soup? <laughs> soup? Yeah. Well, there's actually a gas station nearby. <laughs> I don't know if they have soup. Oh! But I would think so. They might have hot dogs or something. Okay, but I want soup. <laughs> okay, I'll go find the soup. I'll bring you back some, okay? <laughs> right. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's go get your soup. <laughs>